Christians are actually the targets of witchcraft, and you, you just don't know it. Many churches are populated by witches that have been put on assignment in those churches to identify believers that they think to be threats, and uh, they leave those churches having identified their targets and attack them with rituals from the Spirit. This happens all the time in churches all over the world. And we, as believers, want to pretend that this is fairy tale stuff. I'm going to tell you, I was in a bookstore the other day, just walking up and down the aisles. And I came across a book called Practical Witchcraft for the Workplace. That's not the actual title, but it was basically that idea. So I picked up the book and I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading how to use string and hops and different kinds of um, bugs and stuff, oils and things that you can say and incense that you light while you mix them in a pot and do, for workplace manipulation. And they were selling it at Barnes and Noble. I'm telling you, you think that witchcraft is fairy tale stuff. They have it everywhere. It's easy access. Anyone can go online and go on forums and learn how to do witchcraft that will target you. You are living in a battlefield believer. Do not think that sleeping unprotected is wise. So, in this part of the prayer, I, I, I write, I thank you in advance that every curse, hex, spell, incantation, voodoo, sorcery, form of witchcraft, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity sent against me would be reversed upon the heads of the sender sevenfold that Jesus is Lord. Now, some people have a problem with my language here, and I'm going to explain myself. First of all, this is a common list of common forms of weaponized demonic attacks. That's what you're looking at. Sorcery, hexes, spells, voodoo, incantations. This is a common weaponized demonic attack. So we are naming it. We're saying no bueno, shut down. We're denying access. But to this list, you may need to add Santeria. Or if you know that there's a certain type of weaponized demonic activity being thrown against you, you can add that to the list. I mean, this is a template. It doesn't mean that this is, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, canon by any, by any means. And as, as, as I've used this language, I found that even though the list isn't complete for me, it's, it tends to get the job done. Now, I used to pray that curses would just be stopped. That was when I got started and stuff. But then I changed my language and I began to pray. No, I'm going to pray that they get reversed. Why? Because I've dealt with a lot of stubborn people and things in the spirit. Very, very stubborn. And when a curse is just shut down, there's actually no incentive for the senders to stop sending the curses many times. They're just like, oh, well, huh? just try again tomorrow, you know. When a curse is reversed upon the head of the sender, I've found that it serves a strong discouragement to continue. Two, when a curse is reversed with the purpose of revealing the power of Jesus, which is always my intent, I believe that Jesus will honor this prayer and make sure that every reversal creates this testimony. On what scriptural ground can a curse be reversed? Answer, Galatians 1, 3, verse 14 says that we have been made partakers of the blessing of Abraham. In Genesis 12, 3, the Bible says of Abraham, with blessing I will bless you. It continues, those that bless you will be blessed and those that curse you will be cursed. Part of the blessing of Abraham was the, <laughs> the scenario that those that cursed Abraham would be cursed themselves. And as a matter of fact, there were several kings that experienced this when they tried to take his wife Sarah into their house. And they realized they had brought a curse upon themselves. Abraham was not the right guy to mess with. So I say... You know, if I'm a member of the partaker of the blessing of Abraham, I do have scriptural grounds for commanding the reversal of curses sent against me. There you are. Now, I'll add language to that and say sevenfold. Why? 
Well, I loosely base this on the promise that states, my enemies will rise up against me in one direction and flee in seven, according to the blessing in Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. The Bible also says that when the thief is caught, he shall restore sevenfold even to the whole of his substance in Proverbs 6.31. There is a sevenfold consequence that is being applied in these passages, and so I'm applying a sevenfold consequence in the language of this prayer. Next point.